serious. Skeptics of Reddit, what moment in your life convinced you about the existence of ghosts or the afterlife? I lost my cousin to a tragic car accident. I hadn't seen him in about five months prior to the accident. I was in class when it happened and I sensed his favorite perfume. It felt like he was standing next to me in class for about 30 minutes. When I got out of class, I had a bunch of missed calls or text messages and voicemail from various family members who were trying to inform me of his death. This was five years ago, and I still sense the perfume whenever I think of him. It makes me smile even now. When I was a baby, we lived in a very old, creaky house. My mom was half convinced that it was haunted as small things, toys, medicines, and pieces of jewelry kept going missing. Sometimes she swore that I was interacting with thin air. She thought that perhaps it was a mischievous child ghost. One night, my mom put me to bed. She gave me a blanket and a pacifier and left the room once I was asleep. An hour went by and I was awake and crying. She came in to soothe me and found that my pacifier was missing. She thought I spat it out or flung it out of the cot. She searched the room, pulled the cot apart, shook out all my blankets, checked my clothes and could not find the pacifier. Mom, probably sleep deprived, decided she was going to scold the ghost. She put me back in the cot, left me in my room, closed the door, and in her best mum voice said sternly, That is enough. You give that back right now. She waited a few moments and I stopped crying. Mum came to check me again. My pacifier was back in my mouth. Not creepy or scary as many of the posts on here, but this one is more wholesome experience. A few days after my mother had passed away, I was at the park with my boyfriend at the time and my mum's little dog. I had just let the little guy off leash to go for his run when out of nowhere I had this overwhelming feeling of being enveloped by the most absolute pure love and comfort. It felt like my mom was all around me. Very hard to explain, but almost like when you hug someone and you just feel them and their energy surrounding you. I felt completely at peace and had this resounding feeling that everything would be alright. I rationalized my experience by telling myself that it was just my grief over missing my mom so much and went about my day as usual without telling anyone, other than my partner who was with me at the time and didn't share my experience. The next day, I was at home with my older brother, the previous day's events completely forgotten by now. We were hanging out in his room when, of course, the topic of mum came up. Him. This is going to sound crazy, but I had the weirdest thing happen yesterday afternoon. Out of nowhere, I just felt completely at peace and like she was here with me. Me. Just about to cut him off mid-sentence, that's not crazy. I had the same thing happen to me yesterday too. Turns out, we both had felt our mum and the feeling complete love and comfort at the exact same time. To this day, I don't have a rational explanation for it. My brother and I hadn't spoken to each other at all the day it happened and the following day was the first time we sat down to chat. I like to think it was our mum coming to say one last goodbye and let us know we were going to be okay. Our dog died a year ago. We buried him in the garden with some nice flowers covering the burial so no one really notices but we know. A week after we buried him, a robin came by. We never noticed it in the past and now from time to time the robin shows up. Unlike most birds in the wild, this robin comes and sits very close to our patio where all other birds stay in the garden and swoop away when we get near or go in the garden. This specific robin doesn't show fear and feels like it comes from time to time to say hello hang around for a couple of minutes, then leaves. My girlfriend is kind of convinced it's our dog reincarnated coming to say hello once in a while. Personally, I don't believe in afterlife ghost or whatever. Dead is dead. It is all in my mind. She is the same way. But in this case, we just like the idea of the robin filling up that gap of our beloved dog left behind. Just makes shitty things in life more bearable. I've had two really strange experiences over the course of my life. Back in the 80s, fell asleep in my teenage sister's room because she was at work and there was a phone in her room. That was a thing, phones tied to one spot. I had a sleep paralysis episode, which I was prone to, where I was a shadowed girl standing in the doorway to my room, not really doing anything but being creepy and menacing, meh, kinda, me, while I couldn't move. I phased back into sleep. Then later my sister got home and kicked me out of her room so she could go to bed. Next morning, we're all getting ready for school. I hear my sister talking to my mother about the nightmare she had about the girl standing in her doorframe staring at her while she slept. She had the same description of the apparition. I felt a really cold shock hearing her talking about it. Don't know what it meant, 
but at the time we both kind of thought it was a deceased grandmother appearing as a young woman, kind of looked like old pictures of her. 2. 2000s, laying down to nap midday, drifting off at the edge of sleep, and suddenly I hear a scream that jerks me wide awake, startled, scared shitless, and has me looking inside and out of my empty apartment. It was freaky, but when I found no screamer, I assumed I just had a weird dream or REM brain fart event, even though I was just drifting off to sleep. Then my fiance calls me from her car and starts chatty, chatty, chatting while I'm still getting my head straight. And when she pauses for a breath, I ask, hey, um, you didn't happen to just scream really loud, did you? She says, well, I did a minute ago. This guy driving was being a jerk and I was super aggravated and I just screamed. Why? She was miles away. I'm a skeptic. I had a couple of weird experiences that I don't know what exactly happened. It's weird, unknown. I don't dismiss it, but I don't say it was a ghost, spirit, or telepathy either. It's still more reasonable to assume the events were a strange confluence of naturally occurring events. It was my mother that was the skeptic, and this really freaked her out. She still talks about it. This took place when I was six, I think. My great-grandma, mom's grandma, lived in a different city about six hours away. She had gotten injured and been in the hospital for a few days, so we drove up to see her. She seemed fine and was released the day we arrived, so I never saw her in the hospital, just at her apartment. We stayed in the area for a few days and visited with family, because we only got to see them a few times a year. Then we came home. A couple of days after we came home, I went to my mom and told her that Grandma Helen, my great-grandmother that we had visited, had died, and we needed to pack up and go back to the city that my great-grandma lived in. My mom told me that everything was fine and nobody had died, but I was insistent. After about 30 minutes, she convinced me to go and have a bath. While I was in the bath, the phone rang. It was my mother's cousin telling my mom that Grandma Helen had just died. I lived in a house that was haunted for two years in my 20s. It's late and I'm too lazy to type it out, but it was an eye-opening experience. I never saw anything, but things would move and the air just felt so heavy. When we were looking for a new place, my wife did the house hunting as I was busy with work. The first time I ever stepped foot into the place was moving day, and I had a stack of boxes in my hand. I stopped dead at the door. It was a feeling I've never felt before. I said out loud, there's something here. From day one, it was never anything too crazy, and after a while, it was kind of comforting. When you were alone, you never felt alone, and it was just random things. One of our first nights there, we left for a bit and I yelled, okay, ghosty, don't do anything while we're gone. Came home that night and all of our shoes were gone from the front entrance. They were all lined single file down the hallway on the other side of the house. There was a big glass chandelier in the living room with hundreds of glass beads. You'd just be sitting there watching TV and look up and one of the beads would be swinging around super faster. The chandelier was in the middle of the room with our couch off to the side against the wall. We would come home and one of the beads would be sitting on the couch. Nothing too wild. A bit of a prankster ghost, I suppose. We rented from an elderly lady who lived in a separate house that shared a driveway with our house. I always felt like it was her husband. The heavy air and never feeling alone is what everyone felt. I guess I did have time to type it out. Haha. <laughs> When I was seven, I think, there was a new girl that moved into my neighborhood. I thought she was kind of weird, but that I might as well give her a chance. So I went over to her house one day, and she told me that her dad is dead, and her and her mom have to be careful about going outside because they're hiding from him. We go behind a bush, I think, and she points at a car and goes, look, that's my dad. And I swear to God, I saw a car driving slowly down the street with nobody in it. A decade has passed, and I still don't know what to make of it. I don't tell people this because I'm well aware that I sound crazy. So I don't really remember too much of this as I was very young, but my parents filled me in with a fair amount of details semi-recently. I was probably about four or so at the time, at my old house with a play kitchen in my room, completely unpowered, with a simple plastic microwave. All of a sudden, the microwave began to heat up, and I saw a figure with physical features I can't quite remember, but it appeared to be an older woman. I ran downstairs crying, mommy, witch, burn, scare me, or something along the lines of that. I brought my moms upstairs and pointed at the witch in my closet, attempting to describe what they look like. My stepmom said I described something pretty close to her grandmother, although I can't quite remember what features gave that away. 
That was my personal experience, but my moms have recounted countless others. Here are a few. My stepmom told me about a time where my mom and I were out running errands while she was cooking dinner for the night. What's strange is, when she went to the restroom, she came back to her ingredients and utensils scattered in different places in the kitchen. Next, a bit of a creepier one, my moms would be sound asleep at night and then hear loud noises coming from my bedroom like thumping or crashing. Then, they would come up to my room and see me completely sound asleep in my bed. Other miscellaneous occurrence, I had one of those metal word walls where you could arrange words to sentences and such. Obviously, I could barely read and I didn't really touch the wall, but my moms noticed that words on the wall were arranged to say, messy room, which could have been nothing but a little weird. That's all I can remember, really. I'd have to ask them about more, but yeah, been a bit of a believer in spirits or something of the sort after that. When I was young, we lived in a house that was built in 1910. It was a very nice house, but a murder had taken place there and the house was sold to us for very cheap. Not to make this post too long, but this is what my family remembers and I experienced. We are kids around this time about 20 years ago. My sister was laying in bed waiting for my mom to get done using the restroom so she could go to sleep with her. Well, in the front of the room was a window and just outside the window, a white glowing woman appeared. My sister freaked while my mom quickly rushed in. My mom also saw the figure and both still back it to this day. Brother went to use the restroom one night and came face to face with a very tall black figure. He ran to my mom's room where he cried himself to sleep. Brother and sister were playing patty cake essentially instead of going to bed one night. As they played around a large lump elevated the blanket and moved across the bed. My brother thought it was me, but I was only a baby at the time. He smacked the blanket for it to only go back up and travel to the end of the bed where it disappeared, both back to this day. I woke up one night to get a drink of water from the kitchen. It's probably 1am and no one is awake. When I get my glass of water, I hear a loud scream or shriek. It's a scream that will haunt me forever and have a permanent spot in my brain. At dinner, they have the whole family would hear constant footsteps going up and down our stairs. Dad always brushed these things off. Chandelier would also swing at random times. Mom would catch glimpses of a little boy darting across the hallway as well as her clothes being pulled when she would do the dishes. I'm glad we moved out of that house because it was scary as shit. There's a few more things, but I'm getting sleepy. As weird as it seems, I never met my grandfather, but I've always known him. I've always, to an extent, believed in spiritualism, but if I had to go to one exact moment, it was when I was 14 years old. At the time, I was clinically depressed, so I didn't have much thought about my future. Between that and my father being as mean as he was, I almost did myself in. But what stopped me was something to this day I could never explain, like a burst of sadness rushed through me, causing me not to do it. My grandfather on my mother's side passed away when I was less than a year old. Little did I know, I knew him for so long. That same night, I had a dream of a man in an old army uniform. He said to me, get back up, war's not over yet. Next time I saw that man was in a picture on my uncle's Facebook page talking about how he was a military police officer for the army. It sounds made up, but I can assure you it's not because I didn't even know he was in the army until I talked to my grandmother about him. God bless his soul and wherever you are, thanks for helping me through it all. I live in a house built in the 1890s that split into four apartments. I lived here for nine years, originally with my college sweetheart and baby daddy. When he cheated on me and left, I was 23 with a two-year-old. I was sad, but it was a deeper sad, not depression. I have that too, but one night it was just a different, deeper kind of emptiness. I was laying in bed and suddenly I was aware I wasn't alone. I opened my eyes and saw an outline of a young girl standing next to my bed and face. Then she disappeared, but I could hear the sound of a hand running along my sheets as if she was walking away. The craziest part is that I wasn't scared. I felt comforted. She wanted to help me. Flash forward a year or so, I was in the same bed and so, so sad over something. I got that feeling that I wasn't alone again. I looked around and I saw her again, but at the foot of my bed, I felt comforted again. I still live here and I know she's here. I can feel her, but I can't see her. Just those two times. So it needs about five years since the last time. I'm grateful to have someone looking out for me. I wish I could learn about her. 
I never believed in any ghosts or paranormal shit until I saw something that couldn't be explained by anything else. There's an old dirt road I take sometimes. It passes by a really small cemetery, like 10 gravestones, that sits unfenced at an intersection on the road. One night, while driving home in the middle of the winter, I saw a naked old man dancing at the stop sign kitty-cornered to the cemetery. He was so thin, his skin looked like it was tightly wrapped around his bones, and he had this sad look on his face despite his lively movements. I thought I was seeing things, until I saw him again in the spring. I was driving down the same road at night, going about 120 kilometers an hour, when he slammed on my car window with his fist. I swerved into the middle of the road and then back into my lane. There's no way a person could have been at the same speed as my vehicle, yet I saw him clear as day. I pulled over, got out of my car, and looked around with the flashlight to make sure there wasn't someone or something that I didn't see. Nothing. I went home a bit on edge. The next morning in the same spot was a fresh dog carcass with its head missing. I don't drive down that road at night anymore.